All right, so we're looking at a 2005 Honda Accord here. Uh, she had called me yesterday and said that she took her tire to get it fixed at a very large chain store here that everyone knows that happens to also do oil changes and tires. And they, I guess, uh, went to repair the tire and they broke this wheel stud and this one's cross threaded on. It's about halfway out. Um, so it's probably going to break or not be any good. And they don't, since they're not an actual repair shop, they mainly sell like household goods and groceries and stuff like that. Uh, but they do do tire changes and oil. So they're not an actual repair shop, so they said they can't uh, fix this themselves. And they, they, if she took it somewhere and get, got a receipt, they'd reimburse her. So that's where we're at now. Um, the process is pretty similar on most cars. There is special tools to uh, put the stud back in. I don't actually, I don't use them. I have a way I do it, and it's worked for years and years. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, how I do it, and then uh, if you have a, a cord or something similar to that, this will be that'll work for you. And uh, like I said, they're all. It's all pretty much the same, just different situations on what you have to take apart. But uh, we're going to take these off. And, and these studs actually don't look that old. And to me, it looks like they just cross it. As you can see, this one is it's not even on all the way, so it looks like they maybe cross threaded the lugs when they put them on. So you can see there how much trouble that had coming off and uh, anyway it's cross-threaded more than likely or not more than likely it was cross-threaded so we'll pull this wheel off and what we're going to do here is place this stud and this stud now these will just knock out I, I don't remember exactly on these Hondas uh, what I do but uh, I'll figure it out real quick so uh, you're gonna take your caliper off and your brake, your brake bracket, the caliper bracket, and we'll pull this rotor off. So we'll need the tools for that. These should be, I think, tw 12 millimeter on the caliper bracket. We'll hang that off to the side, and then we'll uh, take this bracket off. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the wheel kind of to the right, so I can get access to this bracket, make it a little bit easier, get the tools I need, and then we'll pick it back up after that. So your brake caliper is uh, 12 mil on these Hondas. Go ahead and pull this out of the way. Bolt went flying. Now you saw there it kind of jumped up when I uh, took the bottom loose. It's probably smarter to break them both loose and then take the bolts off. Just didn't think about it. So I'm just going to take this hook and uh, hook this caliper somewhere away from the brakes or from where I'm working. And you just want you don't want this. Uh, I'm working on this this uh, coil spring here. You just don't want to hang it down on the brake line itself. You put that kind of stress on it. Of course, I'm having trouble here. Like my first day on the job. So I think these are 18 back there. I, I'll find out for sure and then we'll pick it back. Alright, so what we're going for now is this uh, brake caliper bracket right here. It holds the caliper onto your uh, steering knuckle. Those are 17. I should have known that with the Honda. As much as I work on. <coughs> you got two 17 millimeter bolts in the back here. <coughs> we're just going to remove those. Pull off your caliper bracket. Now Hondas have. Uh, I'm going to straighten the wheel out again, but Hondas have two uh, Phillips screws holding the caliper onto the hub here. And what we're going to do with that is uh, straighten the wheel out, 
and we're going to get an impact screwdriver works really well with that if you don't have an impact screwdriver maybe you try to rent one or find one it's the easiest way to get these out you can try taking them out with a regular Phillips but uh, you're probably going to have a lot of trouble with it if you hit it with the impact screwdriver and I'll show you that uh, it'll, it should come right loose and you can if you can get a cheap one at uh, if you don't want to spend a lot of money I'm pretty sure Harbor Freight sells an impact screwdriver for uh, I almost want to say less than 10 bucks, 10 or 15 bucks. So it's worth having in your toolbox. Um, and it does work. I use an old Craftsman that I've had for 20 years, but uh, I do have the Harbor Freight one and it does work too. So let me get that tool real quick and then we'll come back and I'll show you. Alright, so this is my impact uh, screwdriver or driver. And you can see you just stick it on there. And what you're going to do is give it a pretty good whack and turn kind of at the same time. And that'll break them right loose. These things are in there pretty good. If you don't have an impact screwdriver, you'll probably end up stripping the threads out or stripping the head out on the screw on the uh, actual screw here. So go ahead and remove this rotor. Hopefully, it's not too hot. So just rotor. Some miles you have to remove this hub. It just depends on the model. This one we can we can snake we can sneak the uh, studs in and out here. So all we're going to do on this is just simply knock these out. Uh, take a sledge or a nice big hammer and just hit them, and it should come out. drift real quick and then we'll knock it out the rest of the way. Alright, I thought the camera was rolling. I thought I uh, had it rolling but it didn't. This is the one that they broke off completely. Uh, I just knocked it out with the drift. And we're going to go after this one next. Now since this one is uh, a little bit longer still, I'm going to put it in neutral and kind of turn it until we get the opening more here instead of beating up on this uh, shield too much. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'm just going to go in the car and put it in neutral. We're just going to rotate this hub until it's kind of up here where there's more room to work and where it doesn't beat up on that uh, shield as much when we knock it out. Now if you do have to put your car in neutral and you have to hit the brake to uh, put it in neutral, be careful not to just barely touch that brake because you have your caliper off and it will uh, push that piston completely out and then you'll be messed up. So we're going to just turn this around until it's kind of in the open area here. Now you are going to bend your shield a little bit doing this. It's not a big deal. We'll just bend it back when it's over. But uh, it's much easier than taking this total hub out, taking the axle out and all that and uh, doing that. So there you go. Knock it out. Just use a simple drift and uh, get it out. So that's how you get them out. That's how it is on most of these hubs. Um, I don't have the part yet actually, so I'm going to go get uh, a couple studs. We're going to need, uh, I'm going to get three lug nuts and I'll show you why. I usually don't reuse the one. I usually get an extra lug nut because what I, how I do this, I use a lug nut to pull it back in. And I usually don't reuse that lug nut when I uh, go to put the wheel back on. So uh, in this case, these look okay. So I'm going to get two lugs, three lug nuts, and then we'll come back and install it all. Alright, so I misspoke earlier. I forgot. On these high end, these are actually precedent hubs, so even if you took the axle off and all that, you still wouldn't be able to get this off. Uh, it would be a pretty big job to replace this hub uh, in bearing. Uh, there's really no way to do it on the car unless you get the on, on the car hub or puller or whatever. So what I do on these uh, is I just cut a little notch. I just put, a grind, put these in the grinder and just grind down one corner of it just a little bit. Uh, I don't get into the stud here. You can see it's still mostly round, three quarters of it. I just grind a little uh, notch out of there and then uh, that lets it slide in easier without messing the, the, without messing the uh, threads up. When you're knocking the, the old ones out, you don't really care if the threads get messed up, but when you're putting the new ones in, you don't want to screw the threads up. So, uh, like I said, all I do is just cut, put it in the grinding wheel. I don't know why they don't sell them like that. They should sell them with a the little notch cut out. 
and I just grind down a little section of it and that makes it easier for it to slide past all this stuff and then I use an old axle nut you can use a big washer or whatever you have I put that over the stud and then we're gonna put a uh, new lug nut on there and the reason why I use an axle nut is because on these coned axle or on these coned uh, lug nuts they kind of go in the inside the bolt perf or inside the nut perfectly and grab it so once you get it there all you're going to do is just use an impact and tighten it up and this lug nut will pull this stud up and you want to get it to where it's flush with this hub but don't just hammer on it after it gets flush otherwise you can stress the bolt and cause other issues so just watch behind here when you're tightening it and it should go pretty oh, different size it should go pretty smoothly uh, if you got something here that's it so um, once it starts to stop all right so I grind down a little bit more we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, nut on there and like I said I found these axle nuts I know not everybody's going to have one of those laying around, but uh, these work the best from what I found. Same thing as the other one, we're just going to run it down until it's flush back here. It's flush. That's it. Two new wheel studs installed. So, go ahead and put the brakes back together and we'll finish this up. Alright, so I didn't go over too much on the back here. You are going to have to bend this shield a little bit. Um, to snake this through after you modify your lug nut. Uh, I just bent right where right where I put it in and I'm just going to take a chisel and kind of bend it back. It's very easy to bend on it and it's really not a big deal right where it's at. So uh, anyway it's bent back now so I'm, I'm uh, I know I kind of glossed over it, but uh, I'm so used to doing this that I don't think about uh, this. Actually, if you would take it to a shop um, and they don't do it this way, you could be in for a pretty good amount of money removing this hub and all that. So this is uh, a very good method as far as uh, just grind down the lug stud a little bit. Use a wire wheel or a file, whatever you have. Bend this. Uh, little plastic shield a little bit where this where you're lined up at run it through uh, put the stud on and then bend that back and you're good to go so we're going to put the uh, rotor back on remember you got those two uh, screws you have to line up so you're going to want to put the rotor back on where uh, those screws can line back up and I'm looking for set screws there they are. So just screw them back in normally and make sure they're pretty tight. You don't need to use a ratchet or a socket or anything on it, just uh, tighten it back up. They won't fall out. Just make sure they're nice and snug. I'm going to go ahead and turn the wheel a little bit and then we'll put that bracket back on. Alright, so we're just going to slide the bracket back on. The brakes are still uh, on this caliper bracket. And I'm just checking this back piece here to make sure it's not going to rub against the rotor in any way. This piece that we bent, that's your main concern when you. Uh, 
bend that a little bit, just make sure it doesn't rub against the rotor when you get it back. You don't want to have to take it all back apart. Again, that 17 mil, just kind of hold your brakes and everything kind of together when you tighten them up. You got an impact. Alright, so I slid the cover back on, the compressor came on, I know you guys don't want to hear that. 12 millimeter, just go ahead and tighten those back up. It should slide right back over as long as you didn't hit the brake real hard or anything. What you don't want to do on these when you got them off. And this brake slide uh, has like a ledge on it. It has two flat ends and then a curved end. You want the flat ends to be up against this caliper. If this brake slide is kind of if there's a gap between the slide and the caliper, then it's not seated correctly. So you have to loosen it and turn it a little bit until that flat part slides into the caliper. I know it doesn't make much sense not seeing it, but you'll understand it when you see it. Uh, these Hondas have like a little ledge on their caliper. And if you don't get that slide slid in there, it will uh, not seat correctly. But you could technically still drive it like that, so you don't want to do that. Um, we we'll go ahead and put this wheel on, we'll be done. So, oh, I just realized I don't have the wheel out here. It's in the trunk. So that's pretty much it on a, a cord. Um, and I should have known you can't just take that hub off. Uh, I've done about 10 or, I mean, I've literally done, I'm not even kidding, probably 10 to 15 uh, bearings this year on these Hondas. It seems like all the Hondas in this area have been needing wheel bearings, so I should have remembered that right off the bat. I didn't until after I said it, and then I realized these are pressed in hubs, so you can't just pull those off anyway. On some cars, you can pull. On some cars, they have the bearing and the hub as one piece, and you can loosen them and pull them out and repair it. But on these Hondas, you can't. It would be you'd have to basically get a new wheel bearing, replace the wheel bearing, and uh, then do it when it's all apart, fix it. So you're talking. Uh, if you have a press and everything, you're probably talking two, three hour job. So, uh, yeah, the only way I know how to do it without doing all that is to cut a little notch out on the stud itself, bend that shield a little bit, put it in, bend the shield back, and then be, be good to go. So, that's how I've been doing it for years, never had a problem with it. Uh, be careful not to crosshead your lug studs. I guess those guys just crossroaded them and broke the studs, so that's unfortunate for her. They are going to reimburse her for the job, so that's good. But uh, Anyway, that's it for this on a 2005 Accord. It should be the same, I think, from 03 to 09. It's probably even the newer ones uh, are the same because they, they still had the press-in bearings. So um, I guess it's the same all the way until today almost. So that's how you change the wheel stud on Honda Accord. Thanks for watching. God bless. And hopefully we'll see you down the road.